Theaters of war in the Middle East are only one of the potential battlefields American soldiers face. For too many, the toughest fight is coming home and struggling through a myriad of complex issues. Campus journalist Bonnie Campo talked with one former soldier and his fight to return to a normal life. Almost 8,000 U.S. servicemen and women dead. Another 50,000 officially listed as wounded. More than a decade of war has taken a heavy toll on the more than 1.6 million U.S. troops who have served in Iraq and Afghanistan. But for soldiers like Peter Davis, their toughest challenge came when they returned home. This is kind of the little ode to Peter, I suppose. Uh, but everything in this wall was either something I've worn in my uniform at one point or I've earned. Davis, a University of Oklahoma student, is an Iraq War veteran who is proud of his service and forever bound to his brothers in arms. I noticed you focused more on the picture. Does this family mean more to you, perhaps, than having the accreditation? Um, they can love me, they can hate me, I can love them and hate them, but we did something together that no one else ever will. But after a debilitating asthma attack and a succession of nagging injuries, including a PTSD diagnosis, Corporal Peter Davis was medically discharged from the U.S. Army. He remembers that day as one of the worst of his life. Because imagine if someone can take and just straight poke you daily with nothing but straight adrenaline every day when you're there and you're in it and you don't know what's going on and then all of a sudden you come home and it's gone. I mean, you're jacked up for however long you're gone, whether it's three months, six months, a year, 18, whatever, and then one day, it's over. Got high, had a great night, and someone said, you want something a little stronger? And I said, sure, and it was meth, and I was hooked. We're not talking, this was not the, this is not the shit that you get from Johnny Blow dealer nowadays. This was back when it could still be fairly clean, fairly pure. I was getting a hard dose of the good stuff, and, and I was hooked from day one. And uh, it, it ripped me apart. It really did. I wanted to not feel, and um, I did what I could to make it not feel anything. And meth was a good way of making that happen. He even attempted suicide. And I just uh, remember going and trying to swallow up a whole bottle of uh, these little green pills and Xanax. And uh, that was the first time I tried to end it all. Um, I, I didn't want to hurt. I didn't want to feel bad. I mean, my body was hurt. Don't, let's, let's not avoid that too because being deployed, bouncing around, I, I had hurt a lot of things in my, in my life and career there. And on top of everything else, I wanted it to go away. Drugs and alcohol were killing him. But a friend intervened and Peter finally decided to come home. He put the war and the army behind him and fought his way back from the edge. We are, we are coming in droves and like I said earlier, we are not going away. There's gonna be a lot of veterans that are gonna roll in and out over the next 15, 20 years. Even the ones who just signed up in the last couple who have been deployed, who are gonna go through the system as these wars end and move on, who are gonna be out there for a long time. Now his past hangs on a wall, not around his neck a noose that almost killed him.